Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking here to show you some really cool watches today. Before we start, you can always find my stuff at TikToking.com and I'm at Steve Halleck on Instagram. Well, it's been a little while and I feel like I should come back with a hard hitting video. So today, as you can see, I have two of the new Grubel 4C sport watches. This is the Balancier Convex S2, and this is the Double Balancier Convex. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this sport line and then compare both of these a little bit. Um, let's start with just the details of each of them. We'll start uh, here at the, at the more simple one. Uh, the Balancier Convex S2 is the entry line. It gets you into the Grubel Sport universe, and you really, you know, get all that you need here. You've got the insane Grubel 4C finishing, and you can see how uh, I've talked about in my other Grubel 4C videos, how a lot of their finishing isn't just about the fact that each individual piece is finished perfectly. It is the combination of finishes. So it's not just that they do one finish uh, kind of to the nines. They're contrasting several different types of finishes uh, and all of them are done perfectly. And that's what gives them this sort of like high definition look where everything really pops out. Uh, the other um, um, kind of horological innovation here is to put the balance wheel at an angle. Uh, and the entire going train up here is also at an angle up this bridge. So uh, the idea I think with the, with the going train is, is just cool and to make it three dimensional. The idea with the balance wheel, I believe, is uh, is uh, it is uh, horologically sort of more um, gravity resistant at the angle of a wrist, um, you know, based on their test. So who knows if that works or not? Uh, I'll wind it up for you and give it a give it a go here. The S two version, you can find a review of the original version on my channel. The S2 version changed a few things. It made a smooth bezel. The original one has writing on the bezel. Uh, so this, they did a smooth bezel. I prefer the smooth bezel. Some people prefer the writing, you know, it's personal choice. Uh, the power reserve is different. You can see it has this kind of cut in power reserve where the red hand moves. Uh, the original one is a little bit more like this power reserve. Uh, it's different colors. So this one was in gray and in kind of black or like a deeper charcoal. This lighter gray is a little bit more limited. This one's 66 pieces. I think the other one is 88, if I remember right. Um, and you know, little aesthetic changes. I think they also say that they changed the case size a little bit between the two, but I I'm gonna talk about case size in a bit. They keep, in theory, quote unquote, changing the case size of these and people are getting all hung up on it, but it really doesn't make any difference. They all kind of wear the same, and I'll show you why and how they sort of wear for real. But you can see um, the balance is quite large, and at the angle, it's really nice on the wrist. The finishing is amazing, and uh, you can see here the main thing with these watches, which is kind of unfortunate because it's the one thing that I can't really communicate on a video, but is just how incredibly comfortable they are to wear. Um, so you can see this one's on a deployant buckle and this one has the Velcro. I'll talk about that a little bit in a second also, but let me put it on the wrist and show you this one quickly. Um, the way that the case is made, it's this really interesting shape where it looks round if you look at it straight on, but at any sort of angle at all, you can see that it's actually kind of oblong. And so it lengthens as you move. And unless you're looking straight, straight, straight on, it looks more of like a tonneau shape, uh, which is what gives it kind of that Richard Mille-ish look. But you can see that even at this angle, you can still see the balance wheel kicking because it's, it's also at an angle and above the dial. Uh, the entire watch is kind of curved to fit the wrist, and you can see the kind of dramatic curve in the crystal itself. The anti-reflective is really, really good. It looks like you can basically reach out and touch it. And you can see that the inner bezel, 
Um, you know, the Rolex guys like to call it a rehaw or however they pronounce it, I just read it, um, is a mirrored polish. So it really picks up that, you can see it there, that's actually a reflection of the balance in the inside bezel. Okay, let's hop over to the double and we'll give this a kickstart here. So the double uh, has, you know, obviously all of the same features, similar case, similar everything to the single, but this adds uh, what I think is really one of Grubel Forsey's coolest um, horological complications, which is a double balance wheel, uh, both inclined and connected to this center differential. So the way it works is each of these is regulated, obviously, and they connect here. Let me move the hour hand so you can see. There's actually, you know, a going train there. You have a normal seconds hand, which goes by the second. Um, this one shows f uh, four minutes, and that's the averaging of these two. So if there's any rate difference in either of these, it gets averaged down um, and in theory uh, closer to perfect. So that's the complication here. And then obviously, I don't know, if you're like me, I like the, I like the kind of justification of looking for horological performance, but I don't actually really care that much in day-to-day -day use. Uh, to me, the coolest thing about this is it just looks really cool, right? You've got both of those balances going. It opens up this whole bottom half of the dial and there's really uh, kind of a lot more going on. But it's, uh, you know, something like a hundred grand more than this one. And this one gets you 95% of the way there. So like anything in, in these high-end hobbies, uh, the last percentages of anything are where you really pay for the money. Grubel Forcey, of course, overall you have that in finishing just to do one notch better finishing than everybody else uh, costs a lot more. But it is noticeable, it's not esoteric, it's the type of thing where you, you, you see it immediately in person when you look at the watch, even if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. Um, but then you see that same kind of um, a little bit of 80-20 effect when you're looking at, at the watches too. 100 grand more, uh, yeah, but it is, it is cooler. Um, so let's talk about the size for a minute. So this one's listed at smaller than this one. Then they made a new version of this that's smaller, maybe a new version of that that's smaller. I can't even keep them track anymore or what they're supposed to be listed at. But I'm gonna show you why it doesn't really matter. So the big thing this, with this watch is, if you can see here, the bezel actually sticks out past this case band. And the case band really is what you care about in the size of the watch. That's what sits on your wrist. Um, and so this one I think is listed, it, it, it's something insane, like the bezel size is something crazy, like 46 millimeters or something nuts. But again, let me show you on the wrist. I have a small, like seven inch wrist. It doesn't even come close to the outside of my wrist. And that's because this dimension, I think is 42 or 43 or something. So even if you cut a millimeter off of that, um, what they're doing then is they're cutting down the bezel. They're making the bezel thinner over a little bit smaller case band, but it really doesn't change that much the way the watch wears. And because this is so square and the way that this comes out, the difference on the wrist is negligible. And you can see, you know, I posted a picture of this watch on Instagram um, last week and somebody commented like, oh, it actually like looks a little bit too small on the wrist. And this is the big one. So... I think that the uh, the specs on this watch and they're they're sort of like fudging the the case numbers. I mean, not fudging because I'm sure they do measure different, but it's not like a different watch where it really changes um, how the watch wears. They're kind of all the same, and they wear very, very, very reasonably. I would say any basically any man could wear this watch, and a lot of women could wear this watch. Um, it, unless you have the skinniest, skinniest, skinniest wrist, I wouldn't be put off by dimensions of any of these versions. Like I said, this is the biggest one and I have a very, you know, skinny wrist and it doesn't even come close to the edges of my wrist. Um, you know, like I can't wear an offshore, I can't wear big Panerais, I certainly can't wear like a big Pilot. Um, 
and this is, is, is very easily digestible. And you can see here, so if I take that off and then show you this, I think this one is theoretically listed at like three millimeters less than that one, which in another watch would be dramatic. But if you look at it on the wrist, it looks exactly the same. So again, you're talking about this measurement is what really matters, but what they're doing is the bezel. So you can see here, see how the bezel is a little bit thicker on this one than that one. Um, and so it ends up being, you know, when you add it all up, it's a few millimeters, which sounds dramatic, but overall the watch looks exactly the same on the wrist and wears exactly the same. So yeah, you can see both of them look extremely cool. If you have both of them next to each other, obviously most people are going to choose this. It's, it's just, you know, it's just cooler. It's like the same thing, but cooler. But if you have this um, and a, uh, a Range Rover, and then that's the choice, uh, you know, maybe you go that way. It's, it's hard to know. For me, I don't know. I'm, I'm a maniac, so I always sort of take it all the way, uh, and I would go to something like this. But uh, this is a really, really, really cool option. Um, let's talk straps for a minute. So this was the original strap. It comes on, actually they first came on rubbers. Uh, so this came out later, this sort of textured Kevlar strap, but they all came with this strap design with this deployant buckle. Um, and it, the strap is super comfortable. It's got, it's like suede lined and really, really, really nice. One of the best straps I've felt on any watch. Uh, I love this kind of all gray combination. I mean, this is a perfect daily wearer watch. It just, nobody would know how uh, sort of expensive it is, over the top, whatever. It just looks like a great watch. It's comfortable, it's easy to read the time. Um, and, and this too, uh, this was the next version of the strap they came out with and it's got this Velcro enclosure. Um, similar otherwise, I think it's the same material, it's got the same lining. Uh, this watch still comes with the deployant, this was added afterwards. And this is cool because this is actually, it's quite a bit lighter. So it is, uh, this is still very light, but this is lighter, you know, obviously it's just a plastic and Velcro versus um, titanium. So it, and it does feel, you can feel the difference on the wrist. But the problem with these, uh, which I have the same problem with every watch brand with the Velcro enclosures, is that they actually don't really give you much adjustment room. This is basically only the only room for adjustment. And you obviously really want as many of the loops as you can get here to make sure that the watch is secure. And so I find myself to be in between sizes, like to make these fit properly, which this one does, but it does because this is a normal length side and this is a short length side. So I actually need two straps to get this to work and the straps are like $1,200 a piece. Um, so you're talking like $2,400 to get straps that fit me uh, if you wanna go the Velcro route, whereas this one, you know, just has holes in the buckle. So uh, this happened, the previous owner had bought these straps um, and so it works, but to me, I would never pay that kind of money. I'm fine with the with the buckle here. So it just depends how it fits. Obviously, I, I assume most people, they fit with just a normal length uh, or maybe a short length, but I happen to be in between the two and that kind of, uh, that kind of sucks. Now these also come uh, with a, or can come with a titanium bracelet, and that can fit either of these models, uh, but it's fantastically expensive, which is crazy. It's like $50,000, uh, but it's an incredible bracelet, and it's cool uh, to me that they come on a bracelet at all. It's very, I love bracelets, and it's very hard to find uh, good watches that come on bracelets. Uh, I remember Richard Meal made a piece unique on a bracelet for Only Watch one time and that I thought was like the coolest thing ever. So the fact that you can that you can actually get a bracelet if you're a bracelet lover like me for these is great. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, with anything Grubel, you gotta pay to play. So I hope that helped. Uh, I hope the sizing thing was clarified. That was one of the main things that I wanted to show you guys. Um, but here they are. These are really, um, you know, they're expensive. I, I, can't, uh, I can't argue with that. But if you've, uh, if you've got the coin and you're playing in these uh, ranges, they're some of the best watches to actually wear. You know, I have exotic, crazy watches in here all the time, and very rarely do any of them just sort of stick on the wrist 
as much as these do. You just don't want to take them off um, because of the the way that they're made and the colors and everything. They, they really, um, there's no reason to take them off. Like you can wear them uh, super casually. You can wear them a little bit more formally. They are, they don't get too much attention, but they get the right kind of attention. And they're just, uh, they're really playful on the wrist because you have either the big balance here or the two balances there. You have a lot of movement all the time and the three dimensionality. And it's just a really, really good design. Uh, beautifully made, obviously, uh, kind of uh, a, a very good candidate for the ultimate possible daily wearers here. I hope you enjoyed. This is the Grubel 4C Balancier Convex S2, and this is the Double Balancier Convex. I guess that's what it's called. Anyway, stupid names. The double, the single, they're both gray. They're both beautiful. I have them both available right now at tiktoking.com, and it was nice being back with you. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.